Hi, Dr. Yas here. Today I'm going to try again to get you to understand what the true mechanism is that relates to osteoarthritis. Forever, people have assumed that because the itis aspect in the suffix of osteoarthritis was there, that it represents an inflammatory response, just like rheumatoid arthritis or psoriatic arthritis. There is no question whatsoever that rheumatoid arthritis and psoriatic arthritis are inflammatory in nature. There is an inflammatory process that delivers the response that you get, which is what represents the disease entity known as rheumatoid arthritis and psoriatic arthritis. Osteoarthritis is completely different. There is nothing inflammatory about it. I understand that for the average person, as long as you see the word itis at the end, you assume that it must be inflammatory. And certainly, the medical system has made no attempt to alter that understanding. They want you to believe that it's inflammatory because what is the most common means by which treatment is provided initially? You are given a anti-inflammatory, right? You're given a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory. You might get an over-the-counter non-steroidal anti-inflammatory. You may, if it's in the knee or the hip, you may get a cortisone shot. That is a steroidal anti-inflammatory. You may get a metrol dose pack. That is a steroidal anti-inflammatory. But the perversity is that there is nothing inflammatory about osteoarthritis. It simply is not inflammatory. Let's really wrap our heads around this idea. This may be the first time you're hearing this information, but it may be the most important information you ever get regarding your symptoms because without understanding the cause, you will never resolve the symptoms. I would imagine for most of you, you've gone on the process of getting some sort of medication and found that maybe there was some very short-term improvement. For many, there was no improvement, and then you went back and the symptoms continued. That has to be confusing to you, I assure you, it's probably confusing to the medical practitioners providing the medication. Typically, if you have some sort of pain in a joint, uh, maybe even in the spine, you're going to go to some sort of orthopedic type of medical practitioner, and they're designed to just see variations in structure, and right, that's what they do. And so once they see that there's a variation in the shape of the femur at the hip joint or uh, maybe at the knee, uh, maybe at the shoulder, the humeral head, the head of the upper arm bone has altered. Okay, now we're going to start presenting you as the very first thing they'll point out is that you have an arthritic change, right? And so the process by which that arthritic change, the change in the shape of the bone is what they're going to tell you, arthritis, inflammation, and that's how you start down the process of getting some sort of medication. This is a fallacy. You must believe this. Why would you imagine it's not true if all indications of treatment that have been provided based on that diagnosis have failed? If we're talking about the smaller joints, or maybe even in some of the big joints, I know people have been shot this in this direction. After the orthopedist fails you, you'll probably be sent to a rheumatologist. A rheumatologist's job is to find arthritis. That's what they find. That's what a rheumatologist does. And a rheumatologist will always give medication. So going that process down that direction, and the rheumatologist reaffirming that there's some arthritic change cannot be a shock to you. The idea that somehow, oh, it's been confirmed that I have an arthritic change and arthritis because now the rheumatologist is confirming what the orthopedist said is insanity. That's all they were ever going to find. 
you just got what you should have expected by going to that type of physician. So it's time to really wrap your head around what is causing that arthritic change. It is mechanical in nature. The positioning of joint surfaces is based on the pulls of the muscles that attach to the joint. Ultimately, when you have strength and balance of muscle, there is a 100% congruency of the two joint surfaces. They touch each other in 100% of the area. That's how it was designed. So that 100% of the surface area can take 100% of the force. Well, due to weakness or imbalance, and I'll say that again, arthritic changes are the result of Weakness or imbalance of muscle. Muscular deficits lead to arthritic changes. So as a result of weakness or imbalance, you will have a shifting of those two joint surfaces. You will not have 100% of the surface area touching so that 100% of the surface area can absorb 100% of the force. You may end up with 80 or 90% of the surface area absorbing 100% of the force. Well, it's not designed to do that. As a result of that, you're going to develop a wearing down on those joint surfaces. Does this make sense to people? If you're supposed to have 100% congruency, 100% of the two surfaces of a joint touching and less than that touches, well, clearly you don't have the right amount of surface area to absorb the force of gravity pushing down through the joint. It's going to make the joint rub in a way that it shouldn't. As a result of that, you're going to get wearing down of the joint surface. At the end of the bones is something called hyaline cartilage, which is supposed to absorb the forces. Well, that works when 100% of the surface area is touching 100%, uh, absorbing 100% of the forces. When you go down to less than that, that hyaline cartilage is going to have a force that's wearing down. Eventually, there is no more hyaline cartilage you end up with exposing bone. When bone is exposed, you will either have a wearing down of the bone or you will have a progressive growth of bone. So if we're talking about the hip joint, you might see instead of this perfectly rounded head of the femur, you might find some concavities in it. That is wearing down of bone. If we're talking about bone spurs on vertebrae or we're talking about a bunion, these are hypotropic hypertrophic bone development due to abnormal forces. So you either get bone broken down, deteriorating, or excessive bone growth. That is the process. It is mechanical. There is nothing inflammatory about this. For inflammation to be present, you must see four primary symptoms. You must see pain, heat, swelling, and redness. Wherever your pain is, simply look and identify Do you see swelling, heat, and redness along with your pain? If you don't, inflammation isn't present. I don't care if God came down himself and said, you have inflammation. What is, is. Start understanding this premise that the body presents symptoms to identify what tissue is in distress and what process is going on. If you don't have symptoms of inflammation, you cannot say inflammation is present. So, I'm going to try to give you the clearest understanding of this by giving you a metaphor. We're looking at a sidewalk, and right next to the sidewalk, a tree was planted, and it was a baby tree. Now that tree begins to grow, and its roots get bigger and bigger. And as the roots get bigger, it starts to tunnel under the sidewalk. And all of a sudden, there begins to have forces pushing up through the sidewalk. And eventually, you see a crack in the sidewalk. And maybe you even see a sh- uh, an alteration at the crack of the two heights of the sidewalk. If you want to go to the medical system, they're going to have their eye right to that concrete. And they're going to say, oh my God, there's something wrong with the concrete. We need to replace the concrete. And they'll give you a concrete sidewalk replacement, something like a hip replacement or a knee replacement. And then a year later, you're going to see the crack again. that goes, oh my God, there's something wrong with the concrete. And you're going to get a sidewalk replacement. And we can keep going on and on and on. But what will stop the concrete from cracking it, even altering its height, changing the shape of the sidewalk? It is the forces applied by the root of the tree. 
So until you address the force variation, you will never stop the process of the concrete cracking and even altering its heights. That's it. If you can get that concept and apply that to every aspect of your your body, including your spine and your joints, you can now recognize that the joint surfaces is just like the sidewalk and your muscles and the way they apply force to the joints is just like the root of the tree. If you start to see changes in the joint, I can assure you it is a mechanical variation of the forces. Stop accepting what these clowns are trying to promote to you. That if you fix the joint, somehow magically it's going to stop the process or stop pain in the area. It's nonsense. It's BS. And most importantly, every bit of evidence has shown it's baseless. The failure rate of surgeries is 70, 80, 90% at this point. The number of revisions being performed in a month, two or three months after a hip or knee replacement is astronomical. You created the diagnosis failed back surgery syndrome because of the failures associated with back surgery. My God, how much more do you need to recognize this is utter crap? And there is no doubt in my mind that the number one diagnosis given globally throughout the body is arthritis osteoarthritis if you can listen to this video and it makes sense to you you can now pull away from the medical system and their attempt to get you to believe that arthritis is inflammatory and the only way to address it beyond surgery is to take medication to minimize the inflammatory process that is pure crap every bit of presence presentation tells you that there's nothing inflammatory about this process. And therefore, if you can move yourself to recognize that it is muscular based, you can now become empowered to resolve your symptoms by understanding which muscles are involved in altering the forces of the joint, correcting that, and you may not be able to reverse the arthritic changes that have developed, but you will stop them from going further. And once you have proper alignment of the joint surfaces, whatever arthritic change has developed will have no impact on the function of the joint. That's the magic of it. Where you may be getting some sort of cracking sensation that's associated with an arthritic change because of a divot in a bone that keeps getting run over. Once you have alignment of the joint surfaces, that divot will never be run over again. You will not hear that sound anymore. So even a joint that has had an arthritic change can function 100% perfectly once you have alignment of the joint surfaces. Once you correct any weakness or imbalance. How do you do that? The YAS method. Boom. Done. Over. You want to understand this process? Then you can get in touch with me by email at my email address, drmitch at mitchellyas.com, D-R-M-I-T-C-H at M-I-T-C-H-E-L-L-Y-A-S-S.com, M-I-T-C-H, uh, D-R-M-I-T-C-H at M-I-T-C-H-E-L-L-Y-A-S-S.com, drmitch at mitchellyas.com. If you like this video and for the first time you're getting a sense of understanding of what arthritis is, please give it a thumbs up. That helps both YouTube and Google to see there's value in these types of videos and helps them to want to suggest them to others. If you like what you're hearing on my YouTube channel, Dr. Mitchell Yas, please subscribe. This is the information I'm going to keep pumping out. Keep pumping out what is real, what is applicable, how you can resolve your symptoms in the shortest period of time. Get you the real information, not what the medical system is promoting, because clearly that's failed. Anyone who wants to say that there's value in what they're saying is insane and simply not looking at the evidence. So if you have a question about your particular issue or you want me to assist you in evaluating you and getting you the right information and if confirmed to be muscular, showing you how to do the right exercise with the right progressive resistance, again, you can email me for a Skype or Zoom session at drmitch at mitchellyas.com. All right, that's it. Another attempt 
to redefine what is osteoarthritis that is in fact mechanical and has nothing to do with inflammation. Therefore, the correction of symptoms that may be associated with this and the ability to stop any arthritic change from affecting function can only be resolved through the use of targeted progressive resistance exercise, which is at the core of the YAS method. For now, this is Dr. Mitchell Yas wishing you a pain-free, fully functional life. Bye-bye for now.